The F-22 is an incredible feat of modern engineering, a sleek and powerful force of nature. Its impressive speed and agility make it one of the most formidable fighter jets in the world. But while its capabilities seem infinite, one question remains. Could the F-22 land on an aircraft carrier? After all, landing on a runway is one thing, but to successfully touch down on a moving ship takes precision and skill. So what limits F-22 from landing on an aircraft carrier? Let's face it, Air Force F-22 pilots are very skilled, but they don't practice landing on carriers. That's a talent that's not given enough credit in the inquiry. Wishing your way on board the ship while traveling at more than 100 knots is foolish. There is no way a pilot could approach the standard trap's safe limits without at least some training. Barricade landings are at least five times more difficult and risky than regular ones. There's no way to go there from here. Some Air Force pilots have crossed over to the Navy and earned their carrier wings, but they'll be the first to tell you that it takes special training to fly any jet on a carrier. It's not a directly transferable skill, especially when it's not designed to fly like that. Second, no carrier commanding officer is going to risk a lot of damage to his flight deck and a big part of his only offensive weapon system by letting 45,000 pounds of nasty F-22 hit it. The landing gear couldn't handle the energy even if it generated enough wind to slow the approach speed to 100 knots. The F-22 likely meets the requirements for landing in the netting on land, but such systems need the plane to touch down and then climb into the gear from a higher altitude. Here, the jets must blast into the deck just in front of the barrier. Given the speeds of descent we're discussing, the gear would break, perhaps just piercing through the jet and compromising its integrity enough to begin shedding bits before or as it impacted the netting. It would be intriguing to watch what kind of damage the hit would make to the steel deck, but the subsequent fire may be disastrous and cause the carrier to be shut down for a long time. Launches might resume within 12 to 24 hours if the deck was unharmed. The dilemma is that no one has consulted the engineers on this, and no reasonable commander would attempt to do so either. Let's not even consider the possibility that the F-22 may fly too low and hit below the rounded down aft deck. The pilot also faces another issue, massive forces during the crash. If not executed perfectly, the impact would tear the soul from the body. Landing on carriers is harder than one can imagine. So why not make a version of the amazing F-22 that can land on an aircraft carrier? Because of the F-22's impressive performance, the NATF Naval Advanced Tactical Fighter Program, which started in 1988, was seriously considering adopting a sweep-wing variant of the new fighter, the FB-22 Concept, a delta-wing F-22 version designed for duty as a fighter bomber, was based on the groundbreaking aircraft. The United States Air Force had agreed to evaluate a modified version of the carrier-based stealth bomber being developed by the Navy's Advanced Tactical Aircraft or ATA program as a replacement for their own aging F-111 in exchange for the Navy considering the NATF as a potentially cheaper alternative to developing their own replacement carrier-based fighter. It was foreshadowed that the NATF program and the accompanying plans for an NATF-22 would be too costly to proceed with. Admiral Richard Dunleavy, who was tasked with articulating the Navy's specifications for a new fighter, was reported as stating in 1990 that he didn't see how the F-22 could be accommodated into an economical plan for naval aviation. As a consequence, plans for the NATF-22 were shelved in the early part of 1991. Would it be possible had the U.S. Navy opted to pursue a carrier-capable variant of the F-22? If the U.S. Navy had decided to try to make an F-22 version that could land on a carrier, there would have been a lot of big technical problems to solve. During carrier operations, planes face a distinct set of difficulties during takeoff and landing than their ground-based counterparts. The stronger physical construction of the fuselage is required for catapult launches and landings with a short distance supported by a tail hook. To be able to fly slowly enough to land on a carrier, the NATF-22 would have to have a variable sweep wing design similar to that of the F-14. Engineers would have their hands full with the unique challenges presented by a variable sweep wing design. To begin with, the Navy already had to cope with the expensive expense of maintaining the F-14 Tomcat's sweep wing system. Even if a new sweep wing design were to be developed for the Tomcat, its high operating expenses would still be rather expensive. 
The Air Force's success has shown that the Navy made the correct call. The F-22 is very costly to run despite having fixed wings. It's also likely that the aircraft's stealthiness would be diminished by the variable sweep wing's design. The utility of such a fighter would be severely diminished if the connecting surfaces of the movable wings provided a high enough return on the radar to achieve a weapons-grade lock on the aircraft. A new stealth fighter for the Navy's flat tops, even if it borrowed considerably from the Air Force's program, would still be far more expensive than the Navy's current F-14 Tomcats, which were quicker and despite their high maintenance costs, remained much cheaper than the F-22. In the end, it's not hard to understand why the U.S. Navy abandoned the NATF-22. It was difficult to implement, costly, and may not have been much better than the Navy's already existing carrier-based systems. As absurd as it may seem in actual application, the thought of a variable sweep-wing F-22 continuing the heritage of the fan-favorite F-14 Tomcat atop America's supercarriers is too amazing to not look back on with a little bit of nostalgia. Do you think the Navy should have pursued the NATF-22, or was it the right call to close curtains on it as soon as the Navy did? We appreciate you viewing Fleet Files and hope you'll consider subscribing for future episodes. Have a great day, and I hope to see you again in the next amazing video.